All right, so let's go over the 3.1, 3.3 quiz review. All right, so over here, remember, these are the different types of angle pairs that we want to always kind of try and look out for in these problems, okay? Uh, remember when the two lines are parallel, corresponding, alternate interior, alternate exterior, these types of angle pairs are congruent, right? If the angle pairs are consecutive interior, all right, when the lines are parallel, remember the two angles then have to add up to 180. And then remember we learned about vertical angles and linear pairs, right? From chapter one, they were also gonna always uh, look out for and use, okay? So for example, number one here, I noticed that this angle here and this angle right here, right? These are vertical angles, and we know vertical angles are congruent. So that means that I can make 8x minus 6 equal to 7x plus 1. Right? And if I solve for x now, uh, minus 7x on both sides at 6, so that's gone. So x is, go x is going to equal 7, right? Number two here, all right, so I notice this angle here and this angle right here, all right, these are alternate interior angles, all right, so these are alternate interior angles. So if they're alternate interior, that means that they are equal. So I know that 10x minus 1 is going to equal 8x plus 13. So I'm solving for x, I minus x on both sides, that'll give me 2x, add 1 on both sides, I get 14 divided by 2, so x is going to equal 7. Alright, All right, let's take a look at number 3 here. So I notice that this angle here and this angle here, they are a linear pair, right? Because they form this straight line here, right? So linear pairs, these two angles add up to 180. So 12x plus 15 plus the other angle, which is 3x plus 15. Together, they have to add up to equal 180. So I'm going to combine my terms on the left side. 15x plus 30 is equal to 180. Subtract 30 on both sides. And we end up with 150. Divide by 15. So x is going to equal 10. All right, so in number four here, we have an example of corresponding angles, right? So these angles are corresponding, right? And the lines are parallel. So we know corresponding angles are congruent. So 15x plus 5 is going to equal 14x plus 11. So if we minus 14x on both sides, we'll be left over with x, minus 5 on both sides, so we get 6. All right, let's take a look at number 6 here. All right, so this angle right here and this angle right here, all right, these are alternate exterior angles, right, alternate exterior. And alternate exterior angles are congruent when the lines are parallel. So we know 80 is going to equal x plus 85. So if we minus 85 on both sides, that means x is going to equal a negative 5. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at number 9 here. Uh, so number 9, the diagram looks a little bit more complicated, but, but don't really let it fool you. So really the only thing that's happening, so let me show you guys what's going on. So we have this line here, right? And we have this line that's parallel. And then we have this transversal that's cutting through the two lines, right? So this other line, we could kind of just ignore it. That doesn't really matter. So we're just going to focus on this angle right here and this angle right here, right? So these two angles, if you recall, they are considered corresponding angles, right? So if the lines are parallel, which they are, and the angles are corresponding, that means that they have to be equal, they're congruent. So 81 is going to equal x plus 83. Minus 83 on both sides, right? So x is going to be negative 2. All right, let's take a look at number 10 here. All right, so number 10, this angle right here is 9x plus 8. This angle right here is 12x plus 4. And we have actually three parallel lines, right? So the three parallel lines right here, parallel lines. And here's our transversal, right? So first of all, we want to recognize that, well, this angle right here, that's 9x plus 8, right? It's corresponding with this angle right here. 
So if this is 9x plus 8, that means this angle right here, we can also say is 9x plus 8 because they're corresponding, and since the lines are parallel, they're going to be congruent. And then we have the 12x plus 4 and the 9x plus 8. These two angles, you have to recognize that they are consecutive interior, right? They're consecutive interior, so that means they have to add up to 180. So 12x plus 4 plus 9x plus 8, they will add up to equal 180 because they are consecutive interior. So we end up with 21x plus 12 is equal to 180. So 21x is equal to minus 12 on both sides. So we get 168 divided by 21, right? So 168 we divided by 21. We're going to end up with 8. Alright, in number 11 here, uh, we're essentially doing the same thing, but we actually want to find the angle all right, that's bolded. So this is the angle that's bolded, darker. So we're going to find out what this angle is. But first, we need to find out what x is. So we have these two parallel lines, right? We have these two parallel lines right here. We have our transversal. So we have to think, what kind of angles are these? So this angle right here and this angle right here, these are corresponding angles. So we know corresponding angles are congruent. So 20x plus 10 is going to equal 22x minus 2. So if you minus 20x on both sides, we'll get 2x. If we add 2 on both sides, we'll get 12. All right, divide by 2, so x is going to equal 6. All right, so now that we know what x is, we can find this bolded angle. So you're just going to plug in all right, 20 times x, x we know is 6 now, plus 10, and we just worked that out. Uh, so we're going to get 120 plus 10, so we get 130. So we know this angle here is 130 degrees. Okay. All right, number 13 here, so we need to find a slope all right, through these two points. Right? So first of all, remember the slope formula, all right, m equals y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So we can make this our x1, y1. This would be x2, y2. We just plug the numbers in the formula. So y2 is negative 6, and then put the minus because that's from the equation. y1 is negative 8, divided by x2 is also negative 6, put the minus, right, and then x1 is negative 16. And then you have to remember these double negatives become positive, right? The negatives next to each other, they become positive. And let's work out the top. So those at the top will get positive 2. The bottom, and we end up with uh, positive 10. So make sure you always reduce your fractions. So if we reduce this, we'll get 1 over 5. And that'll be your slope. All right, number 15 here. So we're going to find the slope again. So here's my x1, y1 x2, y2, so m is equal to negative 10 minus 7, and x is, x2 is negative 1 minus x1, which is negative 1. The double negatives become positive, so if we work this out, we're going to end up with negative 17 at the top, and on the bottom, we have 0 in the denominator. So you have to remember when 0 is in the denominator, right, your slope is going to be considered no slope. All right, or you can tell me undefined, so either one of these. So whenever 0 is in the denominator, when 0 is on the bottom, all right, that means the slope is no slope or undefined. Okay. When, if 0 happens to be on top, then that would mean the slope is 0. Okay. All right, uh, the last one here. Uh, find the slope of the line right, using the graph. Now it's really up to you. You can actually find the coordinates of these points right, and use the slope formula. But I think it would be easier if we just use the concept of rise over run. So going from left to right, right? So that we're going to go from this point to this point over here, right? So that means I would have to go up one, two, three. So if you're going up three, that's going to be positive three because you're moving up. And then how much are we moving to the right? One, two, three, four. We're moving four to the right. So that means your slope. All right, remember how much you move up or down is the number on top. 
So we move up 3, so 3 goes on top. And how much we move to the right, positive 4, goes in the denominator. And that'll be your slope.